Alright, this is uh, Genji, the newest hero to be hitting the Nexus. Uh, we've got a number of abilities. We have a 12 second cooldown uh, on three charges. They all regenerate at the same time. That means that you could, in theory, wait 11 seconds after casting it once and then cast five charges in rapid succession. You can also hit all three at close target on a single enemy. Uh, he has a five and a half attack range. He moves at normal speed. He can mount and he will sit on the horse, which is kind of silly. That's not how horses work, but that's how Genji rolls. His trait is a small jump. It can be buffed in a variety of different ways. His W is a protected status, 1.25 seconds, during which time, depending on what talents you pick, it can give you additional bonuses, uh, such as bonus shield, bonus damage, and cooldown reduction. His auto attack. It's three shurikens. You need to do just the tiniest of stop. I know my purpose. To activate it, you cannot move constantly like Tracer. It's just a tiny stop. I tested this quite a lot. His E is pretty crazy. It looks like this. It's a very fast, long distance dash that deals damage to all enemies within it. And if you kill enemy heroes, you get the cooldown and the mana cost back. I should probably remove this for now. Um, yeah, so that is his kit, and his reach is pretty crazy. Now, let's look at his talents. You can get a swift strike granting movement speed. You can have a bonus range of the cyber agility when you're mounted, which looks like this. Woohoo! And then you also have Pathfinder. You get movement speed bonus if you jump over terrain. At level 4, we get new talents. Choose a talent. Yes, you talent. can increase shuriken damage, restore charges if you hit plenty of heroes. This is pretty yes. straightforward. Extra swift strike Choose damage at the end looks like this. You can see the indicator for where you get bonus damage. The other level 4 is Dragon Claw. Block enough damage with deflect and you can release a pulse around yourself to do bonus damage. This goes across various casts of deflect if you don't have enough on a single cast. On the move. Choose a talent. My skill. Choose a talent. At level 7, gain a shield after deflect ends. It depends how much damage you took, how big your shield will be. Or you can get a cooldown reduction. Or spell shield after you use cyber agility, which is your funny little jump. And finally, he can also have block. This reads dodge. That means 100% block. The attack never procs. Choose a talent. We can't test this easily with Arthas, but I can tell you that this is pretty strong. Then, his level 10s, they're pretty cool. Dragon Blade removes his auto attack and it gives him a sword attack. We're going to remove Malf for now so that we can be the only one that shines. It's an 8 second ability that gives him a sword which hits in a big swath, makes him move forward. Does a lot of damage. Keep in mind we're at level 20, but that's very powerful. During this time, he cannot use his ranged auto attack. Additionally, during that time, if he kills enemy heroes, it resets the cooldown of Swift Strike, which is his E. That means that you can do an E, use your R, kill someone, use it again, and do another big Dragon Blade swipe. Very nice finisher, nice chase, and so on. Choose Moving to the other heroic, it's called X Strike. It has a pretty decent casting range, about a little bit more than his auto attack, and it does an X shaped damage, and it looks a little something like this. There's also an element where after you choose the initial target, it does another hit on the same place. 296, 296 and 592 to top it off. That means you can get a total of 3 hits on someone. 296 is a 1 hit, you can have 1200 damage if you hit all of it. And that's how it looks. You can of course also miss it hilariously, but Arthas is easy to hit. At level 20, it gets upgraded, it's called Living Weapon. Each enemy hero hit by X-Strike reduces its cooldown by 12. All three hits get procced uh, to do the CDR. That means you can have a CDR of uh, 36. That means that the next time you cast it is 44 seconds later, which is pretty crazy. That means if you hit two heroes in the center with all of it, you can cast it again immediately. This is testable if the enemy hero is... The Lost Vikings. A 
of course, we'll wait till they come over. And I'll show you right here. I have no longer the cooldown cheat. And there we go. We can cast it twice in a row. You like twice in a row? How about three times? Now we have a few seconds left. But yes, that is the power of that ability. Now let's look at the other upgraded heroic. Dragon Blade. Dragon Blade reads... Each time Dragon Blade hits an enemy hero, the duration of Dragon Blade is increased by one second. Do you like permanent big samurai sword hits? Well, you can. Your killing spree has ended. All right, now let's look at the other talents. Increase Shuriken's single target damage if you hit it at melee. If you hit all three, flow like water. Each enemy hero hits with Swiss Strike reduces the cooldown by three seconds pretty straightforward and cyber agility has two charges but gets a 15 second cooldown they have separate cooldowns that means if you use two at the same time you'll have to wait 30 seconds to get all your charges back choose a talent uh, reflect uh, deflect also deals an additional 33 percent of the damage blocked final cut is extra damage on the same path even though it says in the area it's actually the path that you just traveled steady blade each enemy hero hit by swift strike increases the damage of the next swift strike by 20 percent which is actually pretty damn cool i want to show you choose a talent and it looks like this the base damage is 471 okay and now the 754 pretty cool pretty cool pretty cool um, and then let's look at his level 20s sharpened stars shurikens pierce all enemies hit it works like you would expect it's very strong you can have a lot of shurikens and they go through everything the other one choose a talent the other Choose one is called uh, Zanshin. A Block a total of 6,500 damage with deflect, including everything that you recruit during the game. Deflect hits all enemy heroes. On the move. I'm not it hitting anyone. Entertaining. Stop hitting yourself. Stop hitting yourself. Of course, I have an unnatural cooldown reduction because I have to cheat. I, I just wanted to show you how it works. You deal damage to everything around you. Of course, keep in mind that I do not have the quest completed yet. So we actually saw the standard baseline single target deflect uh, damage uh, return. We don't have the Zanshin effect yet. Now, with completed quest, I'll show you what it really looks like. Once they actually uh, stop hitting my stuff. Yeah. I just did the quest complete, but I need them to hit me first. Wait. Did I complete the quest? I am the soul in the shadows. What? You are now true. Five stacks? I think. It's killing screen. Alright, we'll get it soon enough. Double kill. Okay, now we have it. You are now truly dead. Did you say you are now truly bad? <laughs> or dead? Okay. Okay, now you can see it. That was rather entertaining. Yes, that's how it looks like. And it doesn't even need to be the hero that attacks you. You will go to all nearby, and that is what Zanshin is. And that's Genji for you in a nutshell, and now we're gonna try him out. All right, so I don't own Genji here yet, and I can buy him either with gold or with gems. You can still not purchase gems, so I actually have to go ahead and buy him with gold for now. Because I want to keep my gems for other stuff, potentially. And there we go. I thank you. <laughs> and here's his skins. Very cool, very cool. 
Uh, I will go and get this skin. To be unleashed. New map, Hanamura. Welcome to Hanamura, a large two-lane battleground set inside the sprawling grounds of Shimada Castle. Much like Towers of Doom, heroes will not be able to directly assault the core of the opposing team, but must find victory through use of the map's unique mercenaries and central objective. Woven across the center line of the battleground are payload pathways for both teams that cover the top and bottom of the map. These payloads are the key to victory on Hanamura. Escort a payload to its final destination, and damage will be dealt to the opposing team's core. A payload will only move if a friendly player is standing inside its proximity circle, with its movement speed dictated by the total number of friendly players standing inside the circle. The payload will hit max speed at three or more players. If even a single enemy player enters the region around the payload, the vehicle will stop. If no friendly players stand inside the proximity circle for a brief duration, the payload will begin to slowly move backwards. Each core has a total of seven health, with the normal payload securing a single point of damage once its escort is completed. If a team manages to destroy a fort or a keep, their payload becomes empowered and will deal an additional point of damage once captured. Every fortification you destroy adds a new point of damage. Push deep into the enemy's territory to make your payload volleys all the more devastating. The mercenaries on Hanamura offer unique mechanics and implications for gameplay yet to be seen in Heroes of the Storm. Across the board, capturing a merc camp, no matter the type, will generate a high value of experience for your team. A fortification camp is situated at the top and bottom of the battleground. If you can secure this camp, a turret will drop that can be added to your inventory. This turret can be placed anywhere on the battleground, including atop the payload, and will block pathing wherever you place it. A recon camp sits on each side of the map, just inside the top and bottom lane. Upon defeating the henchman, a dragon token is made available for pickup. When used, this item will send out three dragon spirits to seek the nearest three enemies to your location. Upon reaching their destination, the dragons will reveal their targets for eight seconds. Just outside the blue and red base sits a support camp. This hard-hitting sentinel will cast a heal on himself once damaged, but if you can secure a takedown, you will be rewarded with a healing pulse Greetings, token. Friend. Upon activation, this item will release a pulse of restorative power that will apply a moderate heal to all nearby allies over a short duration. Lastly, in the center of the map sits a large Mega Enforcer. This formidable boss will require allies to take it down, as it will gorge a nearby hero while issuing a large ring of continuous pulsing damage to the area around it. Securing a takedown on the boss will deal a point of damage to the enemy's core. As a battleground, Hanamura will constantly challenge your team's ability to defend and attack at the same time. A payload respawn timer will trigger as soon as a payload has been successfully delivered to its destination, so teams are naturally rewarded for pushing their payloads faster than the enemy team. Capitalize on this with an aggressive pushing strategy, or by working to stall the enemy on theirs. The core only has seven health, so capturing the center boss could have a major impact on the fate of the game. Don't underestimate the effectiveness of empowering your payloads by destroying enemy forts and keeps. This is a great way to get back into the game if your team is falling behind. Lastly, destroying enemy keeps will cause sappers to spawn with your minion waves. Take advantage of the extra pressure these powerful minions can provide as you continue to push for the win. Hanamura, home to the Shimada clan, has entered the Nexus bringing new game mechanics to Heroes of the Storm. Harness the power of the dragon and empower your team to victory. Uh, there is one easter egg hidden on this map. 
Uh, because they feared the map would be too simple, there is also a special hidden camp where you need to solve a high-level mathematical equation. And if you do, and it's something with quantum mechanics, it goes above my pay grade. But if you do solve it, you get another three core shots as well. Uh, just to kind of uh, liven it up. <laughs> yeah. You should be able to do it in uh, 10 minutes. The average expected game time of the map. Uh, honestly, <laughs> a new astrophysics degree would come in handy someday. Nice, you prepared. So here's my first impressions of uh, of Hanamura. One, it looks beautiful. Uh, two, Overwatch? What's that? Hey, I gotta be honest, right? I haven't played it. So everything is new to me. Genji, Hanamura. Shh, Genji. Shh, just daddy's talking. Uh, and uh, then I was like, hmm, that's really cool looking graphics and interesting. And I was wondering, is there going to be a payload when they bring out? Yeah, because uh, an Overwatch map was leaked recently, right? Like we knew it's going to be. So I've been thinking about what could it be? And I thought, okay, maybe it's going to have a payload. Uh, but how do you balance one payload, payload around uh, offense versus defense do you swap afterwards oh what about both teams have a payload and i swear you i have not been tipped off on this i thought maybe both teams have payload at the same time so that's really cool and you know it works out and it's it's the right way to do it i think but then the, the mer camps seem a little bit uh you know complicated it's my first impression as well as i saw some of you were uh confused that there's so many different mechanics on the map. And God, when I play Overwatch, I'm confused just by the payload. Why does it move sometimes? Why doesn't it move sometimes? You gotta get on it. They have that weird blue to red bar that says how far you are. But I don't know. Am I the blue part? Am I the red part? I don't know. Uh, probably you can find out easily. But when I asked uh, in Overwatch on voice chat once, someone made weird gargling noises. Uh, and uh, so I'm excited about voice chat coming to Heroes of the Storm as well. However, I think we get a few games on the map. We're just going to do terribly. It's gonna, no, uh, we get a few games on the map. We're going to uh, understand the map a lot better. And probably it doesn't matter too much. You take the Merc Camp, something drops, you pick it up. You figure it out soon enough, probably. But in quick match, it's going to be a clusterfuck. So, uh, really cool map. Lots of new mechanics. And we'll see. Uh, we'll see how it plays out. Here's what I think about pro scene play. Is it going to be immediate bans by everyone because the map is too intimidating, daunting? I hope not. I hope in some way there's going to be a tournament uh, that forces the use of the map, maybe a show match. Because we need, uh, maybe not just once, but like a team plays the map once and then a week later, another time, and then a week later, another time. And then I think they'll be really be able to uh, you know, think about how it works out, to get ladder practice in between, get to know it better, and we'll start to see how uh, pro-level teams evolve. And if we do that early after the release of the map, then we're going to get good data on uh, probably what works and kind of uh, help guide the hand of the plebs, the plebarians, you guys. Killer on ice, doom firing, thanks for the resubs. So that was cool, uh, Hanamura and Genji. It's possible that I more often join with the Viking, the team fights. Maybe this can help. I think I will start doing so now. You can start earlier if you feel like your team is struggling, but I feel like they've been doing okay. Uh, if you have Olaf at, on control group one and he gets stunned, you can press number three or two to use your jump and it will break him free. But it doesn't work if you have him selected. That's what I just did. That's why I was able to break the stun immediately. Important thing to know. 